Greetings. So we've just discovered our new universal force from gravity, negative g, ma, mr over r squared, r hat. And we have kind of our definitions of these, right? ma is the mass of the agent, mr is mass of the recipient, r is the distance from the agent to the recipient, and g is our gravitational constant. So as we want to start solving these problems, right, we just found from our last whole module that we kind of have four questions to ask when we come upon a problem. And gravity is a really great example where we can actually use all of these. So we want to start with the easiest one, and I think we all agree that right, force is constant would be easiest. So let's look back at our force, right? look back at our different things, and see when they would be constant. So g, the gravitational constant, is just always going to be constant. m, the mass of the agent, is going to be constant unless things get really, really weird. m, r, the mass of the recipient, also going to be constant unless things get really, really weird. And then this distance, we need to think of a case in which the distance will be constant. A good example of this would be a circular orbit. So if we have our Earth here, and it's orbiting our Sun here, then if we come up with a circular orbit, then the radius, the distance from the agent to the recipient, will stay the same as it orbits around here. So in this case then, then we have this radius r, and this radius r is a constant, and it's equal to the r of the circle. So what we can do is, if our forces are constant, we can kind of check this box, and then we can start with our acceleration is equal to the sum of the forces over the mass. We can start using right Newton's second law given this. And so we know that we only have one force on this because our Earth isn't in contact with anything as it's orbiting. It's just feeling that force of gravity. So it just has the force of gravity acting upon it. So we could even say, right, this is the force of universal gravitation over the mass. And that's all that we have to worry about, right? We don't need to worry about vector sign. Well, how do we decompose this? If we're moving in a circle, then our best chance is to do in the radial direction, in the tangential direction, and in the z direction. And so we have in the radial direction, that's equal to negative r omega squared. In the t direction, it's equal to r alpha. And in the z direction, it's zero. These are acceleration constraints that we have. And then we can take a look at what direction our gravity is. And this is going to tell us all that we need to know. If it's in the r hat direction, that means it's in the r direction, since we said that r and r in this case are the same, and they are the same for circles. So then we would have this equal to negative g ma mr over r squared. And then we're dividing by the mass. So we actually don't have to worry about either of these two. We just have this. And then this mass is the mass of the recipient. So we can do a little bit of cancellation at this point. We can cancel this mass of the recipient here with this mass of the recipient here. We can cancel this equal sign or negative sign with this negative sign. And lastly, we saw that right r is equal to r. So I'm going to write this r on this side as just r times omega squared. And then on this side, I have g m over r squared. So I can do a little bit of cross multiplication. I can bring this r over here, so I'd get r to the third. And then instead of omega, I can write this as 2 pi over the period squared is equal to gm. So I can bring this t over to this side, and I have r to the third times 4 pi squared is equal to gm times the period squared. So one last little thing I can kind of solve for the period. I get t squared is equal to 4 pi squared over gm r to the third. Well, let's compare this to t squared is proportional to alpha a to the third power. This is Kepler's third. So. What we've done is we found for a circular orbit, right, where a is just equal to r and we don't have too much craziness, we are able to very quickly just using Newton's second 
and our acceleration constraints get to Kepler's third law. So we're going to see a lot of other things that we can do once we start getting weird, but this is a very good place to start.